All right, so if you clicked on this video, you must like the words BMW or E36 or Turbo LS Swap because this is all of it. But I'll give you a little recap as to what I'm doing with the car. It's an LQ4 6 liter with the SXE Borg Warner 372 turbo on it uh, with Holly Terminator X. I'm currently dropping the rear end out of it to put a reinforced rear end, the 210 millimeter rear end, uh, along with some M3 DSS axles and going to do some other work to the car too as well as upgrade the clutch and do some stuff in the front and I'm in the process of welding the bracket in the back so that's really where we're going to be picking up in this episode because I'm about halfway through it so far. If you're interested in this kind of build I have an entire build series with currently 25 or 26 episodes on the car so if you're interested in seeing what else I've done to it make sure to hit that subscribe button and check out all the other videos that I have on the car. I also have a bunch of other projects that I'm working on right now as well. I have a 2003 C5 Corvette that's a track car, a 1966 Ford Mustang that I'm swapping a 351 Windsor in, and a 1953 Ford F100 pickup truck that I'm restoring with my father. So everything's ready. I have the diff bolted back up and I have the bolts perfectly matched up for welding this and I flap this all around it. Now, I have it up and down because I feel like that's gonna be the truest way to know that, this is, that these are straight on. And there's a little bit of a gap there and I checked on the E36 original diff and there's a little bit of a gap there but I think that is as straight up and down as we're gonna get it. So let's weld. All right, so subframe is sprayed, got the bracket on. So I just gotta put the bushings on next and then start reassembling the subframe. Let's get to it. All right, so now that the subframe is all welded, reinforced and painted, next I gotta do the subframe bushings. Now I got them from RevShift. I'll put a link to them in the description below. These are not super, super hard bushings. They're pretty, they're, one of the softest ones that RevShift offers and they're softer than some of the other ones that other people offer. I did this for two reasons. Even though they're polyurethane bushings and they're the softest ones, they're still stiffer than the original ones that it came with and I want the car to be able to flex a little bit in the back when I'm launching it and I still want it to have decent ride quality because it's still a street car. So instead of having super stiff bushings, it's not, it's not gonna be a track car, uh, these bushings should do great. So the instructions say, so lube it up nice, which I think I should. They should go on, but I'm gonna lube it up nice. That's what she said. It actually went in a lot easier than I thought, except right there, they don't go in totally all the way. So I'm gonna tap it in. I have a uh, 17 millimeter impact. Just gonna give it a tap. Good, as always. And uh, next I'm gonna test fit this to the actual 
car with the brackets on, and then tack weld it, and then take the then take the subframe off, put the big 210 in there, and uh, finish her out. So I had all the original bolts in a box, ready to go back on, but all these are rusted and shot. So I just got new ones from FCP Euro, since everything's gonna be all new anyway. Might as well get new stuff. And the cool thing about them is they're all labeled with their numbers and what parts they go for, so I can match that up to exactly where they need to go on the subframe. They do a good job of that. All right, I'm trying to do this as easy as possible. So I got upper, lower control arms on. They're just flopping there. And then I'm gonna put it on the ground, put the trailing arm on, arms on, and mount up the diff on the ground and jack it up. I'll show you how I'm gonna do that in a second. So I have it on a transmission jack strapped down. I got my upper and my new lower control arms on. Next, I'm gonna wait on the axles because then I'll do the trailing arms at the same time. And once all this is bolted up, I'm gonna throw this puppy back in. All right, a little E36 trivia. This is the old sway bar out of either, it was a 323 or I think it was a 328i uh, rear end. So that's the one we refreshed it, all this new stuff on. Um, what you want when you're gonna launch a car, I think. You want the stiffest sway bar you can have, uh, that way to eliminate body roll on launching. So you match this up to the one that I pulled out on my 325. You could see the sway bar on the 325 is a hair thicker than the 328. I don't know if you could tell from that, but um, in the interest of keeping it as stiff as possible, that's the one I'm gonna use. Not that it mattered all too much, but uh, I wanted the red on those control arms to match the brakes on the car. And since I had to sand down and repaint the sway bar anyway, I painted it red. The brakes on the car are red. They're from an E46 330i, and they fit perfectly with the contour wheels. So if you're interested in about, about learning about how to do this swap, it was really cheap, less than 150 bucks and easy. I'll put a link to it in the description below. They work great. All right, so all the parts that I have, gonna get ready to go back on the car and put everything back together and then I'll start on the front end, clutch, paint, stuff like that. So if you guys are into this kind of stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm just waiting on the axles to come back from Drive Shaft Shop and I'll finish putting the rear end together. Looks great. Can't wait to see what the whole thing looks like when it's done. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.